Hello, Professor Ndabata. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Byron. It's good to see you. Since you took over the leadership of the NCC, what would you say has been your major achievement? Well, thank you very much, uh, Byron. My, I think my major achievement is unveiling our eight-point agenda. I remember you asking me about my vision yeah, exactly. for, 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 the, yeah. for the industry. And I think um, we waited, thought um, deeply about what um, we should do for the industry. And I think there is unanimity of opinion within the commission from my team that we should come up with a vision that will span over a period of five years. If I may uh, quickly narrate items under the eight-point agenda, there is facilitation of broadband penetration. There is, uh, in that agenda, um, protection and empowerment of consumers. There is optimizing the use and benefits of spectrum. And there are things even related to competition and inclusive, you know, ICT growth. You know, to mention but a few. You know, so um, we have started already in implementing aspects of the plan. That's the good thing about this plan. Uh, unconsciously, we started implementing the plan. And then when it came, you know, components of the plan fall into place, you know, in the implementation process. You know, it's, it's, we, 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 we must say it's either we're very lucky or we plan very well, you know, or a combination of both. So, as I'm talking to you now, we have uh, started auctioning of spectrum that is necessary for deployment of you know, broadband services. But these services cannot be hosted without appropriate infrastructure. And we have finished really developing the regulatory framework for deployment of you know, broadband infrastructure. And very soon we're going to use this to license you know, what we call infracurs. The world over, the knowledge economy is becoming the alternative to maybe oil or natural resource today. In what ways can you say you're positioning the NCC to take charge of this kind of discussion or conversation? Well, I agree with you. You know, I have said this at, uh, you know, different fora on many occasions, that if government, if the Nigerian government is looking for an alternative sector to oil and gas, then I see the telecommunications sector playing that important role of supplementing the oil and gas sector. And the reason why I'm saying this is we have many things going for us. We have the population. We have the enterprise. We have, above all, the motivation you know, that is needed to drive the sector. And I'm saying this with, with all honesty. Look at the level of content, local content development. You know, that is happening. The Burj IT, the jobs in Nigeria, the truck C, all these are, you know, applications developed, you know, locally. And many, many more are coming. Only recently, we rewarded, you know, young Nigerians who came up with contents that are local. Contents that will be driving the economy in agriculture, in medicine, and so on and so forth. So the, the knowledge society that we talk about, you know, we need to sit back and say, what is this society? It's a society that is driven by information. Because the chain is that information, you know, leads to knowledge. You know, you, you need to have an information of where the knowledge is. And if people claim, and rightfully, that the internet is one massive repository of knowledge, and in, I mean, of information, you know? And therefore, how do we make the internet accessible? You know, to play this vital role that we talk about, of transforming the Nigerian economy into a system, and by extension, a knowledge-based economy. OK, let me ask you this, Professor Dambata. Is there any hope? for the landlines in this country? I said when I assumed the duty that we need the landlines. You see, what is happening, the deterioration in quality of service is a result of the neglect, you know, or the, the, you know, the neglect of 
you know, fixed lines. You know, everybody, virtually every Nigerian uses the mobile lines. Okay? So there is a massive migration from this very, very important alternative, you know, you know, you know to, to mobile lines, the peak lines, that is what I'm talking about, to mobile lines. And we may not have the capacity, you know, to be able to handle the massive migration from fixed to mobile lines. Most countries do it, you know, concurrently. They maintain their old systems of communications. You know, when, when in the days of analog communications, when digital communications, you know, di digital technology emerged, many countries did not just abandon their analog technology. The two coexisted for a while. And in many countries, I dare say, you still find analog te technology side by side with digital technology. What we should have done is to ensure we sustain our fixed services, our fixed telecommunication services. And that would have lessened the burden on mobile services, the burden on infrastructure, uh, uh, infrastructure supporting mobile services. And I think we are gradually trying to resuscitate fixed um, uh, telecommunication services. We, we would like to, through this medium, send an invitation to those who are interested in the opera we have, you know, the opera of revitalizing, of resuscitating fixed um, uh, telecommunication services, to please come forward and let us discuss how best we can do this, you know, to those problems. So as we begin to wind down a little bit, uh, we, we come back a little bit now to the celebration of the World Telecoms Day and the Information Society Day by the ITU. Um, from the NCC's part, uh, perspective, uh, can we, can you let us into some of the NCC's contribution to uh, economic growth, you know, uh, so far as the world celebrates? Well, okay, uh, Bayro, let us look back to when the sector, the telecommunication sector was liberalized. We have come a, go a long way. I normally reel out the statistics indicating the tremendous progress we have made since the liberalization of the sector in 2003. Okay, the mobile teledensity is more than 100%. You know, if you want to keep counting. Yes. Two, the contribution to the economy, you know, is over 500 billion naira. You know, from the time of liberalization to the tail end of 2014. Okay, that's a period of 10 years. The investment, foreign direct investment, is to the tune of over 30 billion dollars. The sector has created more than 2 million 500 jobs, directly and indirectly. The sector is forced to even do more. You know, you know, going by the history of what happened over the last 10 years, that is an indication of how things are going to shape out, you know, from this sector. You know, provided the right attention is given to it. I must thank you very much for coming on the show. See you next week. Well, that is the show for the week. If you have any comment or suggestions, please send them to bayeroagabi at gmail.com or Berasdale. You can text the number on your screen. Until next week, when I join you again, I am Bayero Agabi. Peace.